It's an author that you may have heard of that's been sweeping the book scene in the mid-2010s, most notably for her very ugly American U.S. covers. But secondly, she would be very known for creating this large story about these two girls living in Naples, Italy. And those novels are known as the Neapolitan novels by Elena Ferrante, which is actually her pseudonym, so not her real name. And I feel like there's so much I could talk about this series. Um, they're all books that I love, but they're comprised of the four main books, although Elena Fronte has written other books like Days of Abandonment. But I wanted to start this off by reading an excerpt or a quote from a question that someone asked Elena Ferrante about her characters specifically in sort of the pattern that they seem to have. I found this in Ferrante's collection, Frontumaglia. It is nonfiction where it's just Ferrante and her letters to her editor, but also answering people's questions about her books. There's one specific question that someone asked her about why do you have your characters, specifically women, suffer? To which Ferrante responds, I don't feel them as women who are suffering, but women who are struggling. So that's sort of what I'm revolving this video around because it is sort of a question I've always wondered myself, but knowing this detail based on Fronte's answer, I think it makes a lot of sense. And for me, I think it's a question of just how much or how long can women struggle, which makes me think about the book I mentioned earlier, which is Days of Abandonment by Fronte, which is a novella. The story is about a woman, wife, and mother who recently finds out that her husband wants to leave her and how she copes with that. And Fronte wrote this before she wrote the Neapolitan novels and I think it makes a lot of sense just how much inspired it was to sort of lead into the Neapolitan novels. Days of Abandonment, it's concise and full of characterization in such a small amount of time. But the reason I want to bring this book up is because I think a lot of people wonder why write a singular story so long across four books whenever obviously Fronte is capable of writing something as concise. And I think Fronte kind of ups the ante in the Neapolitan novels by not only describing the struggle of one woman, but about two women. And starting with My Brilliant Friend, which is the first book in the series, it does describe primarily the character of Elena Greco and her friend Lila. And My Brilliant Friend actually begins by informing the reader that it's a story that's told about the past from the present. And just a small note that whenever I'm referring to Elena, I'm talking about Elena the character, and whenever I say Ferrante, I'm talking about Elena Ferrante. To me, My Brilliant Friend is all about how Elena sort of conceives or conceptualizes the idea of struggle and it having more than one origin, considering this first book is primarily in childhood. For example, as an idea of struggle being punishment, there's one scene where Elena does see Leela basically, I think, thrown out her family's window for wanting to seek an education. And this example is a simultaneous reminder that Elena's only limitation isn't herself struggling as a woman in the status of education, but also a reminder of the landscape of Naples and how impoverished it is. And because of this reminder of their poverty, it does actually emphasize just how much Elena and Leela choose to indulge in their own imagination as an escape. And to me, this is where it becomes pretty interesting because this idea of their imagination used to combat struggle is also a sense becoming warped because they do the same thing for real world events happening in their neighborhood, especially shrouding the mystery of a murder of a very formidable figure in their neighborhood. I've always read it that this murder becomes sort of the entire origin of where the rest of the novels go from here, mainly because it's not only now this domino effect of how Elena and Leela separately react to this murder, but how there's this difference between boys and girls and this difference between men and women become more frequent as more establishments of the constructs of things like beauty become much more invading and more self-conscious for things of Elena to think about. And sadly, I think this is somehow like a drawback to the first book, My Brilliant Friend, and how people choose not to continue with the series because I think only the magic of understanding all of this in hindsight is by reading the rest of the books and understanding, again, as a reminder, Elena Greco is retelling all of this. And so it's how she's sort of handling defining what struggle means to her. And while I think the first book is the most dramatic and the most nuanced with beginning these relationships that exist onwards, it's funny to me because I feel like as the books go on, it only increasingly makes Elena feel more alienated, isolated, and 
suffocated with this air of violence that's around her that she can't seemingly control, among other things that she can't control as a woman. Elena ends up matching her struggle with people in places that she doesn't want to necessarily match to mean a result of her own behavior. It's funny because Elena still wants to maintain these relationships, or try to, especially with Leela, because she appreciates how she's able to see so much of herself based on the struggle of her peers. It's clear that Elena wants the stability of a reinforcement of acceptance from people like Leela, but slowly but surely Elena starts to distance herself from Leela and what she thought she knew and chooses to become her own person, and her struggle with having to make just choices in general. And the beauty of it all is that Elena's ideals are so headstrong, but she doesn't consider how great Ferrante is at morphing and developing these characters that don't get the spotlight that Elena primarily gives us. Therefore, there's always this sense that Elena is in always a process of catching up even though at times she's living a much better life than the people she's grown up with. To sum that feeling up of the feeling of inadequacy but also of triumph and resolve, I think Ferrante puts it best whenever she has Elena consider. Unlike stories, real life, when it has passed, inclines toward obscurity, not clarity. And through it all, what's able to sustain Elena's life as we find out about her life as years progress is that imagination that I mentioned earlier that she developed so strongly in book one. And it's funny because in books three and four, Elena writes these stories that seem to be complete copies of the events that take place in Ferrante's books one and books two. But as readers, we're constantly reminded that Elena as a character is writing out of both financial necessity, but also to indulge in her own sense of romanticism towards life. And I think that difference or distinction is really important between the practicality of writing and also why people write. Ferrante's books often advise against the notion of romanticizing her characters, but that doesn't mean it has to undermine any romantic parts. Her characters' experiences with romance can feel abrasive and gritty, but never too confessional and not too clever. Her character's approach to romance is satisfying because it's haphazard but not clumsy, or her characters are often very pragmatic but still wistful. And I can just see Ferrante like holding her pen and just, you know, doing what she does so impressively by never there being a moment where she feels indecisive with what she wants to do with her characters and how she's able to create such this large nuance around romance and its sort of traditional foundations by also challenging it so frequently. And so overall, I think Elena as a character, I don't think her struggle is love or even friendship or how to honor her home of Naples. But I think instead it's how she's able to not feel like she has to struggle with justifying or retroactively redefining her experiences or discrediting them. Again, thinking about how this is all a story told from the present about the past, I think it's really Elena deciding what is a story worth telling? And through all of this, she tells it in such a way that impressively maintains this rhythm of nostalgia. Reading these books has definitely been an enrichment of just how it reminds me of how transfiguring fiction can be and how elusive storytelling can be at determining the end or conclusion of one's own story and how writers often have to decide that eventually and when is it ever the right time. And if you're like me that this is a series that you would have wished could go on forever because Ferrante is so good at crafting this sense of endless possibilities. Or maybe it's just because with the character of Nino, how I just love to hate him and I feel like he could always ruin my life. So that was me trying to do the heavy task of describing the Neapolitan novels to anyone considering reading it. I really hope you pick it up somehow. If the publisher of whoever is publishing the new Ferrante book happens to see this, please send a copy my way. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.